So you, the athlete, want to ride in the virtual world of Zwift. There is virtually no difference to the real world. If you've come across this video, you're probably looking to explore Zwift and you have come to the right place. Zwift has dominated the virtual riding universe for a while now. And if you are looking to level up your cycling, like I was, you should be excited. Grab your bike, connect the trainer, download Zwift. It's that simple, right? And at first it seems like a daunting new world. From Watopia to group rides to the Zwift companion app, this is a complete guide to help you understand and start your virtual riding experience on Zwift. Before I go deep into the details of the setup, first ride, group rides, training costs, and everything in between, we need to know exactly what Zwift is. Which leads me on to my first point. So what is Zwift? Zwift is a virtual training platform that enables you to hook up your turbo trainer to your computer, iPad, phone, TV, Nokia 3210 and ride in a virtual environment. At first, it seems like a weird unexplored world, which it is. However, tackling the unknown is rewarding and the same can be said for Zwift. We're all newbies once. You can compete against yourself in tailored workouts and training plans based on your FTP. What's an FTP? More on that later. You can also compete against others in virtual rides and races. There's a range of virtual worlds to choose from, including Watopia, New York, London, and routes for various rides can be found on Strava, where there's a leaderboard for each. Question two, what equipment do you need for Zwift? The main thing that you need is a way to measure your power output, and this is what Zwift uses. You can do this in three different ways. A smart turbo trainer, you remove your back wheel and place your bike in the smart turbo trainer. The smart turbo trainer has a power meter built in. A basic or dumb trainer or rollers with a power meter on your bike already. The power meter on your bike will connect to Zwift. Or a smart bike, a specific bike for indoor training with a power meter built in. This one's only available to people with plenty of money in their bank account. So that's the main and most costly component when cycling indoors on Zwift. The turbo trainer and smart bikes are the best options in my opinion, as they give the broadest range of features and the most realistic feel in Zwift. As well as a way to measure power, you'll also need a computer, smartphone or tablet with Bluetooth or Ant Plus connectivity or an Ant Plus or USB dongle. So make sure you have something powerful. A towel, any will do, trust me, when you, the athlete get pumping, you'll sweat more than the tidal wave in the day after tomorrow. A cycling mat. This is to protect the floor when you turn into a human waterfall. Fan. It gets hot, it gets sweaty, you'll need a fan. If you have a power meter on your bike already, you can make do with any kind of trainer or rollers. Zwift will then use the data from your power meter, but obviously you'll miss out on simulated gradients and controlled workouts that come with using an indoor trainer or a smart trainer. That's right people, gradients are simulated in Zwift as you go uphill. The resistance increases and as you go downhill, you bloom and take off. A speed and cadence sensor is the most basic option and the cheapest option. It allows you to use your regular bike with no power meter attached to a conventional dumb trainer. Zwift will then work its magic and estimate your power. It's not the most accurate or realistic, but it's a cheap way to get started. As someone who used a dumb trainer for over a year, I promise you smart trainers are 100 times better. It's all about the realistic feel. Question three, what are the computer requirements to run Zwift? This is a boring one, so I'll keep it short and sweet. Zwift can be run on Windows, iOS, iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV and Google Play. Having a device that is portable can make it easier to use Zwift. Bear in mind you want the device to be as close to you as possible to connect with the turbo trainer and any other sensors that you want to connect to. I won't bore you by reading out the details. I'll leave a link in the description below. So if you have a PC straight out of 1995, you're out of luck. You'll have to go and ask William Gates for an upgrade. Keep in mind, system requirements like this are forever changing. So check Zwift requirements page to be 100% sure. Question four, how do you set Zwift up? Creating a Zwift account is pretty straightforward. I created my account from the Zwift website. Once you've landed on the site, you just click on create account in the top right, that big fat orange button. It's like they didn't want you to miss it. Then enter your info, name, email, password, shoe size, shoulder width, and your favorite color. 
Accept the terms and conditions to sign your life away and smash that create account button. Now you have a decision to make people. Commit to an eternity of indoor cycling or run away. Well, close the browser. You get a seven day trial before the Zwift Raiders come and raid your bank account. So you can always cancel before that happens. Next, we need to install Zwift. As mentioned earlier, make sure you aren't trying to install on a Nokia 3210. We need power, my friends, we need power. From your account, click on download Zwift, then choose the platform you are installing Zwift on. If you are on a device, you can always just navigate to the App Store or the Play Store and search for Zwift. Follow the instructions with the install. I won't make you watch a loading bar for five minutes, but it can take a little bit of time. When it's finished installing, fire up the Zwift app and log into the account that you just created earlier. Accept the Zwift terms and conditions again, after you've read them, obviously. You'll then be asked which sport you'd like to take part in. Select what's relevant to you. Next up, what do you want to achieve? I'll select get in shape. Now, sensors. This is probably the most important step for cyclists. You need Bluetooth or AMP Plus on your device to search for your sensors. Then you'll need your sensors to be turned on and active. Switch on your turbo trainer or start pedaling if you have a speed and cadence sensor or power meter on your bike. Chuck your heart rate monitor on as well. Once fired up and you have more electronics than a Boston Mechanics robot, you can start searching for the sensors on Zwift. Search for them individually. There is a chance they may connect automatically. Once a sensor has been found, move on to the next until you have all your sensors connected with Zwift. Once connected, smash the OK button. Now we need to add some personal info. Choose your height and your weight. Zwift needs these to be accurate for your power data. Hop on the scale if you don't know your weight. They never lie. Unfortunately, there is no skipping this step. Now you can customize your character so the virtual you is similar to the real you, or are you similar to the virtual you? Who am I? You can select head type, hair color, and facial hair, as well as the color of your hair on the right hand side. Next, your bike, your machine. Adjust the color and pow, we are ready to ride. Question five, go in for your first ride on Zwift. Your first ride is actually pretty straightforward. You've done all the hard work to get to this point. So all you have to do is start pedaling and your little character will start moving. On the screen, you can see lots of info. So let's take a look at what we have. Power data, heart rate, and cadence. Power data is measured in watts from your power meter. Heart rate is self-explanatory. Cadence or RPM, revolutions per minute, is the amount of times your pedal spins per minute. Top middle, we have speed, distance, elevation gain, how high you have climbed, and move time. We also have your rider level next to the little bike icon. The big bar will fill as you gain points and get closer to the next level. We also have drops, which is basically a fictional currency, which you can use to buy stuff, if only they were Bitcoin. Next, the mini map in the top right. This also has the current gradient. Minus equals going downhill, plus equals going uphill. The higher the number, the steeper the gradients. Then on the right, we have other Zwifters nearby, people who are also riding. You can see their current power to weight ratio as well as distance covered in their current ride and from what part of our glorious planet they are from. Now you can ride until your heart's content. Well, it won't be that content when you are going like the clappers. Question six, what is the Zwift companion app? Zwift has a mate in the form of a companion app. With the companion app by your side, you can do all kinds of things on Zwift. One of the best things, you can pair it with the main Zwift app on your computer or device over the same Wi-Fi network and use it as a Zwift game controller when you're riding. So let's take a quick look at the companion app. Home screen. At a glance, see recent activities in your feed, training plan details, upcoming events, and progress on your goals. Events, explore upcoming events, see who is going and sign up. You can click through to see the events that are happening on Zwift, and there are normally quite a few. You can also filter the events to find something a little more specific. Activity feed, see what the people you follow have been doing in Zwift, and also see how active or lazy you have been. You can see all the activities, your favorite activities, or just your own activities. So many activities. You can click through into an activity and see all the data for that activity. 
goals. You can see your previously set goals and how far into that goal you are. You can also set additional goals whenever you like. Map. Want to see where you are in the world while you are Zwifting? Check out the map. Tap on your friend to send a ride on or start a chat. Workout. When connected to the game, the workout screen lets you see and control your workouts, which is pretty handy if you are not close to your computer or device. Text messaging. Chat with people Zwifting around you or have a direct conversation with someone in particular. If you're at an event, you can chat with those in your group. The dashboard provides all the key metrics you expect right at your fingertips. Watts, speed, distance, elevation, time, cadence, heart rate. Pretty handy if you can't see the Zwift app easily. Find Zwifters. You can currently find people who are on Zwift by clicking on Zwifting now. Here you can see if anyone you follow is currently online or you can go to find Zwifters and search for someone directly online or offline. If you dive deep into the world of Zwift or ride with other people on Zwift, then this app will likely be installed on your phone. If you are a casual Zwifter or you have a Nokia 3210, you probably won't. Question seven, group rides. Riding on your own indoors can and will probably get a little bit boring. We don't want to get to that place. In comes Zwift to the rescue, like that Buzz Lightyear moment. And to be honest, it's probably the main appeal of Zwift group rides, which also ties into events as well. Now to create a meetup, you will need the companion app. This is the only way that you can create a meetup. Secondly, you will also need to be following the people that you would like to meet up with. You can't just join random people who are out on a leisurely Sunday ride, unfortunately. So open the Zwift companion app, navigate to find friends and search for someone you would like to ride with. Once you found them, add them as a friend. They will get a request that they can approve. Now you are not alone, it's time to ride with them in the virtual world. To arrange a meet, head into events and click the little group icon at the top. This will take you to the group ride section where you can create a meetup. Here you can choose what, where, when, you can also select a distance or duration for the meet. There is an important drop down at the bottom that says customize your meet. This allows you to select keep everyone together. If it is a social ride, you'll want to select this so that you don't all end up miles apart, especially if you're riding with people on a penny farthing or varying abilities. Submit and your meet has been created. Simply fire up the Zwift app close to the time and you will be asked to join the meet. It's as simple as that. Question eight, how to enter races on Zwift? A good old fashioned race to the line. There is nothing like an indoor race to make you appreciate a fan and a towel. Trust me, it gets steamy. Now you, the athlete, may be thinking that racing has specific leagues that are too elite for the average cyclist to join. It's actually not, which is good to see from Zwift. There are races every day from short and quick sprint races to long distance slogs that are challenging for the fittest of the fit. Either way, you can join them, no questions asked, and race anytime you like. Now before we look at how, first there are four categories of riders, A, B, C, and D. This letter indicates your ability based on watts per kilo. When entering a race, you need to enter the right category or you may just get destroyed, cancel your Zwift subscription and take up badminton. Not sure where that came from, but you get my point. Equally, there is no fun in smashing the entire field by cheating, which in the Zwift world is called sandbagging. As mentioned, to find your category, you need to know your watts per kilogram. To do this, take an FTP test, which is so much fun, then divide your FTP test score by your weight. For me, my FTP is around 260. 260 divided by 80, my body weight, equals 3.2 watts per kilo. Here is how the categories are distinguished. So for me, I'll be in category C slash B on a good day. Now we know how strong we are, let's enter a race. You can do this on the companion app or on the website. The app gives you more information, so I usually use the Zwift companion app. So fire it up and head to the event section. Click on events and then make sure you have the bike selected from the top three icons. Head over to the filters in the top right and make sure you have only race selected. You can also filter by category as well. Select apply and you can now see all the races. We can see the time, amount of laps and the amount of people who have joined. 
If we click on the event, we can see more information. It's nice to see it's broken down by category. You can click on your category to dig a little deeper and see the total distance, elevation, and other riders that are going to be in the race. Simply click on the plus icon to join and you are good to go. As with the meetups, simply ride in the Zwift world before your event and Zwift will notify you that an event is starting soon. You can navigate to the event and spin the legs on the start line ready to push. Question nine, can I upload my Zwift rides to Strava? Strava can automatically sync with Zwift for that seamless show off. <coughs> I mean upload. To upload a ride to Strava from Zwift, you simply need to connect the two accounts. Log into your Zwift account on the website to begin the fun. Click on your profile picture from the menu, which will take you to my profile, your profile. Within your profile, you are looking for connections, which we can see here on the right hand side. So go ahead and click on that. You can connect Zwift with as many platforms as you like, but for now, let's click on Strava. Now you simply log into your Strava account and Bob your uncle the world now knows you are afraid of the bad weather and cycle indoors all winter question 10 are there structured training plans on zwift yes there are structured training plans on zwift that you can take on there are plenty of plans depending on your needs as mentioned earlier the training plans are all based on your ftp so they are specific to you your current ability as you improve your ftp increases and your sessions get harder no one likes to plateau if you have a smart turbo trainer or a smart bike then you can utilize erg mode to quote zwift Erg mode sets your resistance to a specific wattage targeted based on your cadence instead of basing it on your course gradient. In layman's terms, it forces you to output a specific power at specific times. So if you put down less power, Zwift will increase the resistance. If you pedal hard and put down more power, Zwift will reduce the resistance. This keeps you at a constant power. To view what training plans are on Zwift, there is a good website called What's on Zwift, pretty direct name, that I would recommend. Here you can search and filter the 2,538 workouts that are currently on Zwift. It's much easier to search on the website than go into the Zwift app itself and search there. Question 11, is Zwift free? No, Zwift is not free. Your first week trial is free. However, after those seven days, the cost is £12.99 a month or $14.99 per month. When you add in all the equipment requirements, the cost is fairly high initially, but the long-term rewards on your health, in my opinion, are worth it. Now, if you found value in this video, tap the like button and click or tap on the screen right now to watch another exhilarating video. If you stumbled across this video, you may like to stumble across some more. So make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. Self-love and safe riding.